Hello everybody, today we are going to be continuing our positional ranking series going division by division. Today we're looking at the AFC North, definitely one of the toughest, just most violent divisions in the NFL. It's been very competitive, all four teams are very talented and very good. This is definitely a very fun division to watch, these teams all hate each other. So this should be a very fun video, going to be ranking how all four teams stack up against each other at every position. We are going to start with the quarterback position and this one was very difficult for me Lamar Jackson Joe Burrow both in this division I am going to give Lamar Jackson the benefit of the doubt right now just simply because he has stayed healthy I think you know comparatively they are both top five quarterbacks in the NFL they are both incredibly talented players you know we'll just slot Joe Burrow in at number two the main difference right now is that Lamar Jackson has been able to stay healthy He's obviously a dynamic, amazing dual threat quarterback. He had another MVP year this past year and was truly dominant for large portions of the season. Burrow, when he plays and he is fully healthy, he is one of the just most pinpoint, deadly passers just with his accuracy, his understanding of defenses. He's so good from destroying you from the pocket, but he is also really good when the play breaks down. Both of these quarterbacks are top, top players and they are franchise level quarterbacks I wouldn't have an issue with you rating either one either way I'm going to give Lamar Jackson just the slight nod here even though I am a Bengals fan I'm going to give him the slight nod just due to the injuries that Burrow has sustained he just needs to show he can stay healthy but it's very competitive there then I am going to go with the Browns obviously Deshaun Watson we just don't really know what he's going to be whether it's injuries suspensions he really hasn't been a very consistent quarterback or even out there a lot for the Browns. I think he has a ton to prove. The talent's undoubtedly there, but I can't say I'm a huge fan of his. And, you know, I, I can't say I'm rooting for him, but I do think he is much more talented than the guys the Steelers have. Right now, it's Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Russell Wilson, I mean, he definitely had a balance back year this past year, but I still don't think he is a very good quarterback at this point in his career. He can't throw over the middle of the field. I think he may benefit from Arthur Smith's new system where it's a very play-action heavy, run heavy. I think that could be decent. Justin Fields has talent, but he was just never able to put it together. His confidence was completely destroyed in Chicago, and you know he cannot read defenses or get the ball out on time. So I think the Steelers very clearly number four. I think the top two very, very close and very competitive, but that's how I see the quarterback stack up in this division. Vision. Then moving to running backs, it's got to be the Browns here. Nick Chubb obviously coming back from a nasty injury, and hopefully he is okay because when he is out there, he is one of the best running backs in the NFL. I think just truly on the ground, he is the most dominant runner at this point. I think McCaffrey is the most complete back, but Nick Chubb just running the football he is so so good at it and i think he's very clearly the best running back in this division i also like some of the guys they have behind him jerome ford out of cincinnati he's been in the league a few years and been a really solid backup for them they've got naeem hines dante foreman pierre strong some other guys that i do actually kind of like in that running back room then for the Ravens, going to go with them next. Derrick Henry, obviously the huge addition to that running back room. You move on from J.K. Dobbins, who unfortunately just couldn't stay healthy. And then you bring in Derrick Henry. I do think that he may be kind of hitting the point where he's accumulated so many carries over his career that you may start to see some struggles with injuries, with just breaking down. Maybe he's not the same kind of dominant running back. But in this system, he is definitely going to be fun to watch. Ton Monken's system with Lamar Jackson, the QB run threat. It's going to be very interesting to see how he is in this offense. I definitely think he could be really good, and it's hard to count him out completely at this point because he's still shown to be a pretty good running back. Then we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers at number three. I'm actually a big fan of Jalen Warren. I think Najee Harris is fine. They run him between the tackles, and I don't think he's a very efficient runner. He doesn't have a great yards per carry. Don't think he's super explosive, but he does wear you down. And Jalen Warren's really that change of pace type of back who takes advantage of his opportunities. He is has a good yards per carry. He breaks big plays off. I think he's the better running back on this team, but you've got a nice one-two duo there for the Steelers. And then at number four, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. You trade Joe Mixon to the Texans this year. End of an era there. You have Zach Moss, who you brought in from the Colts. He was very productive. He's a good pass protector 
protector, you know, back when he was in Indianapolis this past season. He's not the most explosive runner. Chase Brown showed some really nice things and limited carries. He had some real explosiveness, speed. He had some fumbling issues in college, didn't show that on limited carries in the NFL yet. But I do think that this running back room for the Bengals could be better than a lot of people think. But it's not flashy. And I do think it is the worst of the four teams in this division here. But moving to wide receiver, I think the Bengals are still number one. You lose Tyler Boyd. We'll see what happens with T. Higgins. I'm very confident he's going to play this year on the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know about in the future, but the Bengals are one of the most stubborn teams in the NFL. They will not trade T. Higgins unless they feel like they are fleecing the team that they are trading him to, which probably means a first round pick at least. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but I think Jamar Chase is a top five receiver in the NFL, maybe even higher than that when he's truly on. T. Higgins is a great number two. I still think he's a top 20 wide receiver in the NFL when he's able to stay healthy. You've got Jermaine Burton, Andre Yosevis, a six-round pick out of Princeton, showed a lot of potential. Charlie Jones, you drafted out of Purdue. This is a deep wide receiver room with high-end talent at the top, and definitely think the Bengals still are number one when it comes to wide receivers, even after losing Tyler Boyd. Number two, I am going to go with the Cleveland Browns in this division. Amari Cooper has still proven to be a really productive player, even with Joe Flacco throwing him the ball this past year. He showed some really nice things. He is a great route runner, separation type out of Alabama who you know they now have the Jerry Judy connection as well obviously he came a lot later but he was kind of that route running separation type really didn't work out in Denver definitely wasn't jiving with the new culture there so you know it was worth the swing for the Browns you have Elijah Moore in the slot as well he's been kind of eh since being traded from the Jets. Cedric Tillman, I did like out of Tennessee that they drafted, not this year, but this past year. I do think he has some talent. I do think that this Browns team has some weapons that they can go to. At number three, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers for the wide receiver position. I think George Pickens is a really good player. Contested catch situations in particular. I think he is great in those. He is a good downfield target. His attitude is kind of up and down, but, you know, I do think he has talent. You draft Roman Wilson out of Michigan in the third round. I think he's a nice power athletic slot that can be really good on crossing routes. You know, things that Arthur Smith runs in his offense off of play action, I think he can be super helpful in. Van Jefferson, kind of the same thing. Coming over from Atlanta, was previously on the Rams. Definitely showed some ability to separate at times as well, so... We'll see. I, I don't think that the Steelers room has super high-end potential, but I do think they have a couple of decent playmakers. That's kind of how I feel about the Ravens, too. Went a little back and forth on the Steelers or the Ravens at number three for wide receiver. For the Ravens, you do lose Odell Beckham. I don't think that's as big of a loss as some people think, but Zay Flowers really impressed me as a rookie. I thought he was really nice and well worth a first-round pick. I thought he was a good player coming into the draft, but you know I did think he kind of emerged already as a number one target for Lamar Jackson outside of Mark Andrews, who we'll get to in a minute as well. You do have Rashad Bateman injuries. He hasn't kind of turned in the productive first round wide receiver that you would have hoped for. You've got some other guys, Nelson Aguilar, who bring in from New England. He's had some success here and there. Uh, Devontae Walker, a speedy pick out of UNC. He was a fourth round pick in this draft. And, you know, if he can settle some of his drop issues, I really like that pick as well. So I don't think the Ravens have a bad wide receiver room. It's just not quite on the same level as some of the other teams in this division. Moving to tight ends now, I think this one is very clearly the Ravens at number one. Not only is Mark Andrews the best tight end in this division, you know, coming back from injury, we'll see if that's still the case, but I certainly would expect it to be. He's been one of the top five, maybe top three tight ends in the NFL for a couple of years now, but I also really like the depth. Isaiah likely stepped in very well for Mark Andrews when he did go down. Charlie Kolar, somebody that I liked coming out of Iowa State a few years ago, I really like this tight end room. I think it's deep and obviously very talented at the top. I have them clearly at number one there. Number two was tough between the Browns and the Steelers here. I'm going to go with the Browns. Njoku had a much more productive season than Pat Fryermuth. 
Obviously, Friar Muth was out for decent chunks of last year, but Joku had a great season, almost 1,000 yards, 975 yards, had six touchdowns as well. I thought within this offense, especially kind of when Joe Flacco came in, he had a lot of success, had a couple of big games, had 104 yards against the Bears, 134 against the Jets, definitely had some productive weeks, also had two touchdowns against the Jaguars. I think he has developed into a really nice tight end. It took quite a while, but you know, at 27, he's still a really solid, youngish player. And, you know, he's been in the league for quite a while now, but he really kind of turned the corner and became a really good tight end for the Browns this past year. Fryermuth, I also really like as well. I think he is a kind of do-it-all tight end. He's good in the blocking game. He's good as a receiver. I do think he's a nice middle of the field, reliable, kind of move the chains type of tight end. He's not the most dynamic weapon. He's not going to rip up the seam and, you know, take on a linebacker super consistently. He can definitely do it, but, you know, he's more of that just settle into a zone, a soft spot in the zone, pick up 10 yards, fall forward as the defender, you know, comes up and wraps you up. I definitely like how Friar Moose plays the game. I think he is a really solid player for them. And then you've got some other guys, Darnell Washington. He's still very much a developmental piece in that tight end room. Then for the Bengals at number four, Mike Gusecki you bring in. I think he's probably going to be even more of like a power slot type of guy this year. You have Tanner Hudson, Drew Sample, a pure blocking tight end. You drafted Eric All, Tanner McLaughlin. These guys could all turn into decent players, and Joe Burrow tends to elevate his tight ends pretty significantly, which is why the Bengals don't really invest in the tight end position, but... You know, definitely a clear step below the other three groups in this division. At offensive line, the Browns still very much dominate this. You did lose Bill Callahan, and he was a huge component of, I think, the success of this offensive line. So, we'll be curious to see how this Browns offensive line looks as he moves on to Tennessee, but still a very complete, solid unit. Jedrick Wills maybe hasn't been amazing, but he's still a solid player for you. Joel Batonio, Wyatt Teller, great guards. Jack Conklin, if he can stay healthy... Yeah, but if not, you've still got Dewan Jones, who I thought looked pretty good in limited action. Ethan Pochich at center as well. I think this is a talented offensive line. It's deep. You drafted Zach Zinter. You have Brian Allen, Luke Whipler. I do like some of these guys as well. James Hudson as well at tackle. This is a very talented, deep offensive line. They've been one of the best offensive lines in the NFL and a huge component of the Browns' ability to run the ball and have success offensively. I definitely think that they're the best group in this division. Another group that has improved a lot, though, is the Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, for a long time, the discussion with the Bengals has been, are they going to be able to protect Joe Burrow? And you can't say that they aren't trying. You spend big money on Orlando Brown last offseason. He was pretty good. You know, I think that Burrow does a good job mitigating his lack of athleticism by being able to step up in the pocket. You get a very similar kind of tackle in Trent Brown, who is going to be the starter day one, but Amarius Mims is waiting in the wings to take over that role. But it's huge to have three tackles that you feel pretty confident in for the Bengals. Then the interior, Cordell Volson, he was actually pretty good towards the very end of last year. I need to see it to believe it, but you know, he has shown improvement as a fourth round pick out of North Dakota State. And then you've got Ted Karras and Alex Kappa, both Super Bowl champions on other teams trying to do that for the Bengals. They're just consistent average starters. And, you know, I do think that this is a much improved unit for the Bengals. On paper, it is a pretty good group as well. It is expensive. You know, they've poured a lot of money into acquiring this offensive line and drafting some high end talent in Amarius Mims as well. But I do think that this is a pretty good group on paper. Next up, I have the Baltimore Ravens. Ronnie Stanley, you know, when he plays is a good player, but it is just such a rarity now. He has really struggled to consistently be able to be on the field. That leaves you with Patrick McCarry, who is a decent backup tackle. Andrew Voorhees out of USC. He lost his entire season, rookie season last year. Coming out of USC, he was really strong, had the most bench reps, you know, did it, you know, at the combine, even though he was injured. And he's a seventh round pick, but he would have been a much higher pick, maybe even a day two pick last year had he not been injured. So, you know, he's slotted in to start right now. I definitely could see him 
well outperforming his draft capital. Tyler Linderbaum, a really good move center, super athletic, has been great for them. Ben Cleveland, we'll definitely see. You know, I think that he's had some decent moments when he has gotten the opportunity. And then you've got Roger Rosengarten and Daniel Falele at tackle. Very different types of tackles. Ro- Rosengarten out of Washington. He is very athletic, but he needs to put on some serious weight. I thought he struggled with power at the college level. Falele, gigantic human, not easily moved. And, you know, I do think that it's very interesting how different those kinds of players are. But it's a solid offensive line. You definitely have questions. Rosengarten, Voorhees, are those guys going to be successful? The injury issues with Ronnie Stanley. But I think overall, it's still a pretty decent group. Then we have the Steelers at number four, and they could absolutely well outplay this position here. They have a lot of new faces on the offensive line. Troy Fatanu at left tackle, Zach Frazier at center, Mason McCormick at guard, all those guys, newly drafted players that I really liked those investments. You've also got Isaac Ciamalu, who I thought was pretty decent for them at left guard. You've got James Daniels, Broderick Jones, who was pretty good for them at right tackle once he was able to play. So I'll be interested to see what this offensive line looks like. It's very young. They've invested a ton of draft capital into it. You still have, you know, Dan Moore. You move on from Chooks Akorafor. So we'll see how this all looks, but I think it is a group that has lots of potential. They just need to show it with a lot of young faces there. Moving to the edge rush position, this division has absolutely nuts edge rushers. The two best in the game, and Trey Hendrickson is a top 10 edge rusher as well, in my opinion. So a very talented division when it comes to this. I'm probably going to make both fan bases mad by saying this, but I'm going to have the Steelers at number one, but I do think that Miles Garrett is the best edge rusher in the NFL. So I think that the combination of TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith is just insane for the Steelers. Obviously Watt, he's so incredibly crafty. He's so good off the edge, just an immense talent. He doesn't face as many double teams because Alex Highsmith and Cam Hayward are also on this defensive line. And Highsmith is a really good player in his own right. He had eight sacks last year, had 15 the year before. I thought he had an even better year this past year, though, even building off of his 15 sack season. He's an excellent player for them. And, you know, I really think that that combination is so deadly. The Browns don't even have a bad one two combination themselves, but these guys are truly special. You also have Nick Herbig, who you drafted, you know, in the four fourth round in 2023. He showed some really nice flashes as a designated pass rusher, kind of in those NASCAR packages where you just get all the pure pass rushers on the field. I think that he has some absolute juice in there. But I also really, really like the Browns edge rush group. Miles Garrett is just so physically dominant. His just pure power athleticism, his ability to win with technique. He is so good, and I do think he is the best edge rusher in the NFL, potentially the best defensive player in the NFL, I would say. I do think he is. And now that Aaron Donald has retired, I mean, you've got some talent. You've got him. You have Zadarius Smith, who did slow down a little bit, but I still think he's a good player. You've got Ogbo Okoronkwo, who you brought in from Houston last year. He had a productive season as a third edge rusher. Alex Wright, Isaiah McGuire out of Missouri as well. This is a very talented, very deep edge rush room, and Miles Garrett is just absolutely exceptional player. It's just hard to beat the TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith combination at the top. Then I am going to go with the Bengals. I think this is a very talented edge rush group as well. Trey Hendrickson is a great crafty edge rusher. He was super productive. He is just so under the radar and people do not realize how productive and how good he is. You leave him one-on-one, he's just constantly coming up with clutch sacks. He's just super productive. You also have Sam Hubbard who was playing through an injury this past year, but he's a good effort sack guy. He's a super good run defender. He'll probably get you about six sacks a year, most years. You drafted Miles Murphy, who definitely showed some flashes from time to time. He definitely needs to continue to work on his technique, but he has some flashes in there. Joseph Osai, Cam Sample, guys who were you know middle round picks in previous years that definitely are productive as well when they do play. So very deep talent edge rush group it's just really tough to compare to the others in this division then we have the Baltimore Ravens I think very clearly at number four 
And I don't mind this Ravens edge rush group, but it's not great. Odafe Owe definitely hasn't turned into the first round pick that you hoped he would be. David Ojabo also hasn't been amazing for you. Kyle Van Noy, you do have Idisa Isaac, who you drafted out of Penn State in the third round. I thought was a really nice pick. They just, they have a type. It's athletic freaks and, you know, you try to develop some more technique with these guys. I just think they're very clearly number four in this group. I don't hate the guys they have, but the edge rush position, they just don't compare with the other teams in this division. However, they do have an excellent interior defensive line group. Justin Matabuike, he was a free agent after this past year, and he got paid, and rightfully so, because he was fantastic for them. He was a true disruptor, which is so hard to find on the inside, and that is just critical for disrupting some of the best quarterbacks in the league. Getting pressure right in their face, Matabuike was able to do that consistently. Michael Pierce, a great nose tackle. He's just super consistent in that role. I really like what they have. You also have Travis Jones, who I really liked out of UConn a couple of years ago. I think that this is a really solid group. Brent Urban, Broderick Washington, Solid, solid players kind of across the board for this Ravens front. Then going to go with the Steelers. Cam Hayward definitely took a step back from previous seasons. Was not the same kind of player that he had been in past years. He was dealing with injuries, was banged up. But I like Keanu Benton. I think he's a solid player. Larry Ogunjobi has played for almost every team in the division at this point. Uh, he's been a solid player for them. Dean Lowry's all right out of Minnesota as well. So, Definitely not as strong as this group has been in the past, but still very talented. Kind of the same thing with the Bengals, who I have up next year. They lose DJ Reader, which is a just gigantic loss for their run defense. He definitely was struggling with injuries. He is getting a bit older as well, so I understand why they moved on. They got Sheldon Rankins, who's kind of bounced around the league, but has definitely been productive at certain points. Drafted Chris Jenkins out of Michigan in the second round. He's a really solid run defender. You have BJ Hill. You also drafted McKinley Jackson. You have Zach Carter as well. None of those guys are super exciting, but I do think it's a fine into your defensive line group, which, you know, I don't think is maybe the strength of this team like it once was, but you do have some guys that you are confident can be at least decent players for you, and even if they're not going to be true game wreckers. And then that's kind of how I feel about the Browns as well. Dalvin Tomlinson, a really good run defender. I think that he is solid in that role. Shelby Harris, I think is a productive player. He is never going to be one of those guys that is super flashy, but he does his job relatively effectively. Quinton Jefferson's kind of that penetrating three tech who you also drafted in Mike Hall. He is definitely somebody with some burst, your first pick in this draft and hoping he can turn into a true pass rushing, you know, quick athletic guy that just wins with speed technique even if he's not going to be super helpful for you in the running game. So that's how I see the interior defensive line stacking up, but I do think it is relatively close across the board. At linebacker, I am still going to go with the Ravens. You lost Patrick Queen to the Steelers, but I will say, I think Patrick Queen benefited a lot from playing next to Roquan Smith, where Queen can kind of just be that run and chase off ball will linebacker where he's not necessarily always at the point of attack he's able to just kind of sift through the defense be able to read and react because he has great athleticism and he's able to react really effectively and that turned him into a really really good linebacker but I think a huge part of that is that he didn't have to play the mic role he was able to be next to a all pro caliber linebacker in Roquan Smith so I'm not quite as concerned about losing Patrick Queen as perhaps some people are. I also do like Trenton Simpson. I think he can fill that role really well when he was coming out of Clemson. I didn't think he was you know, super good within the tackles, but you give him in that run and chase role, kind of like they had Patrick Queen, definitely understand the vision with that there. Then the Bengals I have up next. Jermaine Pratt and Logan Wilson, just kind of as solid of a linebacker duo as you can get. Logan Wilson, really good coverage linebacker. He's somebody that's instinctual, always around the ball. I think he's a consistent player. Jermaine Pratt has had kind of an up and down couple of years. Two years ago was an elite level season. This past year, he was a little bit worse, but I think the defense as a whole was just struggling a bit with injuries and other things going wrong around them. But 
I do think that those two are really good. Akeem Davis Gaither, a solid third linebacker as well. They are playmakers at the linebacker spot. They're maybe not always the most consistent, but they take the ball away. They are, you know, very opportunistic in that linebacker room for the Bengals. Then at three, I do have the Steelers. You do have the big signing of Patrick Queen, which I already kind of explained. I do think he's a good player. I don't see him as this like elite linebacker, though. I think Alandon Roberts, decent player. Cole Holcomb, hopefully he's able to come back from injury. Peyton Wilson is just a complete wild card out of NC State. I also didn't think he was... I thought he would be best in a will linebacker role where he is able to use his athleticism, run and chase. He's an old prospect and has dealt with serious injuries, so that's why he fell. But definitely it was worth a pick at that point in the third round for this year. Then I have the Browns at number four. Nothing wrong with the Browns linebackers either. Jordan Hicks and, of course, Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, who was drafted from Notre Dame. You know, it's not a super inspiring group, but it's perfectly fine. You also have Devin Bush, Tony Fields. Those guys are fine, I suppose. Um, you know, nothing really of note in that linebacker room. Obviously, Owusu Koromoa kind of plays that hybrid, almost joker role for this team. Hicks, maybe Bush, a little bit more of that inline linebacker type. So I do think there is a lot of versatility for Jim Schwartz and this defense using JOK there. Then moving to corner, this Browns cornerback room is, I think, one of the most underrated groups in the entire NFL. And I think people rate them, but they don't understand how good this group is. You have Denzel Ward, who's a true shutdown number one corner. You have Martin Emerson as your other outside cornerback. He's long, tough to, you know, bump and run, get downfield with. And then you have Greg Newsom in the slot, who's super just instinctual. He has great movement ability. I also liked Cameron Mitchell, who they drafted out of Northwestern last year. Miles Harden, an interesting swing as well out of South Dakota. Uh, and so I definitely really like this cornerback group. You have three deep with some really good, fun, instinctual players I like as well. So I definitely have the Browns at number one here. Then the Ravens at number two. I think that Marlon Humphrey, when healthy, is a really good corner, though he does struggle with that and does have some moments where he isn't always the most consistent, but I do like him. Brandon Stevens had a great year last year just from a pure numbers standpoint. I think he is good. I'm not sure he's quite as good as some Ravens fans think, but I do think he is very good. And then you drafted Nate Wiggins, who if he can get a little bit of weight on him, his ability to run, cover, and have good instincts, he's just really sticky in coverage and it's hard to get around him. So I really like this corner group for them. You've got Jalen Armour Davis, Arthur Morlett, TJ Tampa, I really liked as a swing as well in the fourth round. They've got some guys in this cornerback group, and I don't think you'll be sweating quite as hard if Marlon Humphrey goes down again. Then at number three, I have the Bengals. It is a little bit of a thinner group, but I think the starters are really solid. Cam Taylor Britt absolutely had an underrated breakout season. He was the number one corner for this team, even though Chidobia Wuzier was back from injury last year. Cam Taylor Britt was the best corner on this team, and it wasn't particularly close. I think he has shown really good ability to be a number one corner. DJ Turner showed some nice flashes as a corner too with his blazing speed. He kind of trailed off a little bit towards the end of the year, but I still have belief in his talent. Then Mike Hilton, still one of the most instinctual corners from the nickel in the NFL. His ability to come up and run defense, be a great run support type of player while also having good instincts in the slot, especially as a blitzer. He is really dynamic from that position. I do think Dax Hill is going to play some decent amount of corner as well. You've also got some other guys here DJ Ivy who drafted in the seventh round last year actually looked pretty good before he went down with an injury Josh Newton out of TCU in the fifth round it's a fine group I don't think it's anything super special but I do think that they have some good players in this corner room and then the Steelers at number four I think Joey Porter Jr. absolutely has the talent to turn into a nice corner one you know, there were some inconsistencies from time to time, but I did think he showed some great flashes as a rookie, and I think he'll continue to develop into a nice player in year two. On the other side, Dante Jackson is fine. Uh, he's not a great player, but he's all right. You've got Darius Rush, who was somebody I didn't like you know, for them, but there's not a lot of other guys on this team that are super exciting. Ryan Watts, Corey Trice Jr., who I thought was an interesting swing out of Purdue last year. Injuries, though, is going to be the key with him. 
there's just a lot of unknown for the Steelers, especially beyond Joey Porter Jr. If he goes down, Dante Jackson and, you know, Darius Rush, some of these guys, I just, I don't love their ability there. I think that the nickel corner spot is a big question mark as well for the Steelers team. So be curious to see how they, they go about that there. Then at safety, this division actually has really great safeties, but number one has to be the Baltimore Ravens. Marcus Williams, ever since they signed him from the Saints, he's been a really solid player for them. Kyle Hamilton, though, has developed into an absolute all-pro type of safety, nickel, corner, whatever you want to say he is. He is just an amazing player in that role, and I think he's potentially one of the best safeties in the NFL at this point in time. His versatility is fantastic. I really, really like what he is able to do for them. And, you know, I don't think there's a ton behind those guys. I think TJ Tampa could end up playing some safety for them, which I would be interested to see because I think his talent actually matches up pretty well for the safety spot. But moving on to number two, it is going to be the Bengals here. And I really like just the depth of the safety position now for the Bengals. Last year, you had Nick Scott and Dax Hill. Nick Scott was really quite bad and lost a job to Jordan Battle early on. And Jordan Battle was great as a rookie. He was super highly rated and a really underrated part of this defense. Dax Hill had some serious ups and downs. That's why they signed Geno Stone, who had seven interceptions for the Ravens this past year. I think he is a huge player that can be really nice for them. And then, I mean, you still have Dax Hill. I think he's going to be somewhere in this backfield, whether he's playing nickel corner, outside corner, safety. I think he's going to be just a versatile piece. And then, you know, Von Belt, you signed from Carolina, obviously a player for the Bengals for a long time. It was super successful within Anna Rumo's defense. I think that he's proven that, you know, he just knows the system. He's really solid in that system. Tyson Anderson's also a really great special teamer when he is healthy, which has been a problem for him. But, you know, I think that is a five deep safety room for the most part. It is really talented. I think all of those guys can be contributors. So I do like that depth in the Bengals safety room and the versatility it provides. That being said, I do think Minka Fitzpatrick is a great safety for the Steelers. He is fantastic. Deshaun Elliott is fine in the other safety spots. I don't think he's awesome, but Demonte Casey, when he's not being suspended or being an idiot, he's a okay player as well. I don't love that second safety spot for the Steelers, which is why kind of the group effort of the Bengals I have over Minka Fitzpatrick, but Minka's a better player than anybody on the Bengals. There's just question marks about that second safety spot, that kind of nickel safety role that is just becoming such a huge, important spot on defenses in the NFL. I think these Steelers just lack a little bit of uh, true security in that spot then the browns which i actually think the browns have really solid safeties this is absolutely not saying that their safeties are bad juan thornhill grant delpit both of those guys are really decent players i wouldn't say that they're amazing grant delpit is very up and down dealt with injuries and you know was drafted out of lsu uh, he was a second round pick high expectations he was kind of considered a bust and then he broke out and had a really good past couple of years. One Thornhill coming over from the Chiefs that he had a decent first year with Cleveland. It wasn't anything super exceptional, but he did have some nice plays. I don't think he was a problem on the back end of that Jim Schwartz defense, which was such a good unit for them. So I think overall the safeties in this division are really, really good. I would say that the Ravens are number one and then the next three are pretty negotiable for me as well. Coaching is probably the most difficult position group that I've had to rank so far in this series for the AFC North. All four of these coaching staffs are fantastic. I think they're all top 10 coaching staffs probably in the entire NFL. So this was very difficult to rank. I did go ahead and go with Mike Tomlin first up and the Steelers team. I think that what Mike Tomlin has done just consistently being in the playoff hunt, consistently being 500 or better, not having a losing record. I get it. You know, he hasn't had a lot of playoff success in a while, but I also think that this team is not great, especially offensively. I mean, he drug the Steelers to the playoffs this past year with no quarterback. And I mean, it was really impressive to see what he's been able to do consistently, getting his team to play above their talent level, 
despite you know his issues with keeping guys around for way too long on a coaching staff like Matt Canada, I mean, he was a problem for years and years. And that at some point falls on Mike Tomlin. At the end of the day, the dude wins football games and he has a you know winning culture instilled within the Steelers organization. So I'm going to put them at number one. The Ravens go at number two. Harbaugh is really consistent. You know, you know that this Ravens team is going to be well coached. And I would say that over the past 10 years or so, they've consistently been the the most impressive team within this division. I think that they do need to have more playoff success. For the level of talent on this roster, they should be winning the AFC. I mean, I get it. There's Joe Burrow. There's Patrick Mahomes. There's Josh Allen in the AFC. But you have Lamar Jackson. You have a top coach. You had a great roster this past year. You were the number one seed in the AFC. Like, at some point, you got to start winning some playoff games. And, you know, I do think that that is a little bit of a blemish on Harbaugh. But both of those guys have won Super Bowls. So that's ultimately why I have them at number one and two. The other two have not won Super Bowls. And that is why I'm going to go with Zach Taylor at number three. He's been to a Super Bowl. He's had a lot of playoff success. When Joe Burrow has been healthy, this team has been really good in the playoffs. And they've made it to the AFC Championship game two years in a row before they dealt with a lot of injuries last year. Burrow got hurt, and Zach Taylor showed that it is not just Joe Burrow that is you know saving this offense and saving this team. They did really well with Jake Browning at the helm. And you know, Jake Browning is far from the caliber of quarterback that Joe Burrow is. And he was able to steer them to a winning record at 9-8. and eight. Really impressive season considering what was happening within the Bengals organization when it came to injuries and everything else. So I have them there. And then Kevin Stefanski and the Browns coaching staff at number four. Look, I mean, I think Stefanski is a great coach. He's the best coach they've had in a long time. He's a really good offensive mind. I do think he needs to trust his quarterback more and and start throwing, unless Deshaun Watson really is that bad. I mean, I get that the team identity is running the football and winning with defense, and that's great. But, you know, I do feel like they have been kind of a shell of a real NFL offense for a little bit when it comes to the passing game. Defensively, Jim Schwartz did a fantastic job this past year. Once again, Stefanski's a great coach. I would say he's a top 10 to 12 coach in the NFL. So, no shade on him, but he should have the leaf playoff success. And, you know, at some point in a division with the great coaching staffs in the AFC North, you know, somebody has to be last and it is going to be the Browns here. This one, I think, is probably one of the toughest divisions to rank. There's so much talent, but I do love the AFC North rivalries. It's so much fun. And so let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like content like this, please hit the like button. Helps support the channel. Just a free and easy way to do so and lets me know you like content like this. Please hit that subscribe button as well. Trying to get to 5,000 subscribers and would truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.